So to demonstrate some of the capabilities of the Navionics boating app, the first thing I've done is I've installed that application on my iPad and it creates an icon like this. I'm going to select that icon and launch the application. As soon as the application is launched it should open up to a picture of a chart and the first thing you should note of these are these three small icons on the lower left hand corner of the screen. If you select the one in the middle you've got several options here. One is called government chart, one is called navionics, and another is called sonar chart. You definitely want to select sonar chart. Once you've made that selection you want to press the menu button on the lower right hand side of the screen and it'll bring up a number of options on the left hand side. One of those is called map options. You'll select map options and as you scroll down you'll see that there are a variety of things that you can choose from on that menu. The first thing I'm going to point to here is water level. For those of you who fish impoundments where the water level fluctuates, this is where you would change the water level. So in this case the lake that I fish on most frequently is about four feet below full pool. So I'm going to hit delete to clear that field then I'm going to press minus four and close that window. So that has automatically adjusted all of the depths on my chart by four feet to account for the water level change. Now I'm going to come down on this left hand side to where it says fishing ranges and I'm going to turn that option on by sliding it from left to right. That opens up the option to color various parts of your chart and this is very important. The first thing that you're going to want to do is add a range name. I'm going to call one crappie. And I'm going to set the target range for these fish to 18 to 28 feet because that's where they're holding right now. That is based on a current fishing report. So the first thing I want to do is set the maximum and I'm going to set that to 28. Then I'm going to come over here and change this to 18. So now what this is going to do is set up my chart so that all of the areas on the chart that are from 18 to 28 feet can be highlighted in red. Now the way that I turn that option on is by touching this small red button to the left of the word crappy. If I touch it you'll see a check mark appear in that circle. You also note that part of the chart has already started to turn uh, the, the red color that we've selected. The next thing that I want to select is add range because the fishing report that I read mentioned something about I should be looking for fish in, in 18 to 28 feet that are near a channel. So I'm going to create another area called channel and I'm going to make that color gold and I'm going to set my depth as deep as 65 feet but at least 40 feet. So 40 to 65 feet will be my channel indicator and those are also turned on. So now what I'm going to do is hit close at the bottom of the screen and I can zoom in on areas of my chart and see where I have areas that are targetable for finding crappie. Ordinarily, if I were going out to look for crappie and I had no idea where the fish were holding or couldn't identify them easily on my chart, the entire lake, all 38,000 acres of it, would be areas that I'd wind up scanning with my sonar. The way that I've highlighted my chart has now identified those areas that are most likely to hold fish 
and also it helps me to to spot quickly areas on the chart that I no longer need to look at because it's unlikely that fish would be there. So let me show you here. This is Lake Sydney Lanier in North Georgia and I'm going to zoom in on a particular portion of the chart and give you an example. Now as you'll recall we highlighted the target fishing range in red and we've highlighted channels in gold. If I look at this creek arm one of the things you'll immediately notice is that there's a large number of docks that are not highlighted uh, in red. That means if I'm searching that part of the lake I'm probably wasting a lot of time. So I should be looking for, for the docks that uh, are more likely to be holding crappie and in this case I'm looking for docks that are in the red zone that are near the channel. So if I were looking for what the prime candidates are in this particular frame I would be looking for any of these docks that show up in red because they're all within just a, a hundred yards or so of this gold area which is a deep channel. You'll also notice there are more docks over here that are not in the red zone that I would not need to investigate and again those are options for saving time. Again same thing here. There are at least six docks that are not in the target depth and nowhere near the channel. However, here's a good example of a dock that I would want to investigate. The depth is perfect, it's very near a channel, and that's something that I'd want to investigate to determine whether or not there are crappie underneath that dock. So I've shown you how you could identify prime candidates for locating crappie. Let's change the game a little bit now and say that we're looking for a different species. Let's say we're looking for striped bass. The first thing I want to do is go back and press the menu button and select map options again. We'll scroll down. Our water level is going to remain four feet below full pool for the current body of water we're in. But I'm going to come down to fishing ranges I'm not going to delete these ranges that I've defined earlier. I'm just going to turn them off. So I'm turning off crappie by touching that button and turning off channel by touching that button. I'm going to add a new range because my fishing report tells me that striper bass are holding over about a 60 foot bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another range name and I'm going to call it striper. and I'm going to color that in green. No, not stripper. Striper. We're going to set our target depths. Now, we, I mentioned that the fish are holding over a 60 foot bottom. Well, I'm going to guess that the fish don't exactly have a measuring tape. So what I'm going to do, just to make it a little bit easier to spot this on my map, I'm going to say anywhere from 63 feet down to 57 feet. The fishing report also said to look near points and humps in that depth target. So I'm going to zoom out on my chart again and I'm just going to pick a different part of the lake. So there's, uh, there's an area that's near where I keep my boat and it's in this area right in here. So rather than just randomly wandering about this part of the lake, I can see immediately where the green areas are and those are the places that if I want to troll with my boat uh, looking for fish, those are the most likely places to find them. So for example, if I'm looking here, you'll notice this is a point and you see the green zone coming right around that point looks like someone has already created a waypoint here that indicates that this is a fishing, fishing hot spot. Spotted bass in this case. So spotted bass behavior very similar to stripers in some cases. So again, this would be a good area to try to troll, uh, whether you're pulling live baits or umbrella rigs or whatever technique you choose. This would be a good area to look because it is a point. There's a hump over here on the left-hand side of the screen, 
and you'll see uh, an area that's about 60 feet in depth all around here. So you could, you could easily troll through that area looking for fish and you'd most likely find stripers in that area. Once you've defined multiple fishing ranges, it's easy to switch back and forth. Again, all you have to do is select Menu, Map Options, scroll down to where it says Fishing Ranges, turn off the range that you're not interested in, and turn on the range that you are interested in. If the fishing report has changed, let's say that now the fishing report says that you're between 15 and 25 feet, you select your depth range, set the maximum first, and close the fishing range window. Now that has automatically changed all of the highlighted zones on your chart. And let's change our channel depth a little bit. We want to make that, let's say we want to make that a little bit narrower. So we're going to change this to a 60 foot maximum and a 45 foot minimum and close the fishing range window and turn on the channel. Now you can see we've, all, we've just very quickly switched over from looking for areas that might hold striped bass to areas that might hold crappie. In the areas where you don't see docks on the chart, those are areas that you might survey looking for brush piles. If you don't see brush piles, you can look at your chart looking for docks. And in this case, if I zoom in here just a little bit and I'm going to close my option window, you'll see there are a number of docks here that aren't in the red zone but one that is. If I was going to go in and if I only had a limited amount of time to look for the fish, that's the place I would go because I have a dock that is squarely in my target range and it's near a channel. Another option that I have is to measure distances on the chart. So if I wanted to know, let's say I'm looking at this dock as a potential place that I might want to fish, and I want to know precisely how far it is from that dock to the channel. There's an icon on the lower right hand corner, it looks like a compass, and if you touch that it brings up a small menu here with a couple of push pins. You just touch one of the push pins, place that on the dock, and then take the other push pin and put it on the edge of the channel. Now I can tell by using that tool that is 216 feet from that dock to that channel. And it also gives me a heading if I'm using a compass to navigate. If I want to turn that off, I simply have to touch the compass icon again. So here's another thing that you can do when you're planning your trip. Before you're ever even on the water, you can look at your chart and identify places that look interesting to you. So let's take a look, let's zoom in a little bit closer here. And I see this dock, it's near a bridge, it's in the right target depth, and it's near a channel. And I want to check that, that area out when I'm in my boat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the chart where that dock is, hit the question mark and I'm going to add a marker to my chart at the selected location leave that checked and I'm going to choose the push pin icon and hit save now as I'm navigating as I approach that area, I'll be able to see that push pin and know that this is one of the areas that I wanted to investigate closer. So now let's assume that I've investigated this dock and I've determined that it's not holding fish. So I'll probably want to delete this marker as it's not going to be a productive location for me to, to fish. So I'll touch the push pin icon.
select marker 1 with the arrow and hit delete. Click yes to confirm that you want to delete the marker and now when I return to the chart that marker is no longer there. Another feature of the Navionics boating app is automatic routing and you use it something like this. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen there is a button called route. If you press that button and say automatic it gives you the option to pick two areas within the body of water that you're interested in. I'm going to say my starting point is right about here just outside my marina and I'm going to go to a different part of the lake that's further north I want to go to this fishing spot right here you'll notice the moving dotted line that it's calculating and if I press the go button at the bottom of the screen it has automatically created a route for me from my marina to that other waypoint. And it's also telling me that it's 11.2 miles. Now the chart just shifted a little bit because it's identifying where I am as I'm putting this together, but the route information is correct. You can access that information by going back to the menu, going to the routes. You'll notice that we have one route identified. Press select and if you want to delete it you just press the trash can icon and that route disappears there are a number of other options available to you in this application and there are probably more than I would cover in this particular video but you start to get the sense for how much time you might be able to save if rather than looking at all 38,000 acres of a particular lake, uh, if you can narrow that down to less than a tenth or perhaps even a hundredth of that amount of space, uh, it can save you a tremendous amount of time when you're trying to locate fish. That's just one of the, the wonderful features of this particular application. I highly recommend it.